Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter. I'm a big fan of the Maelstrom synthesizer. You can get some wild sounds out of it. It's important to know what it does exactly. Um, what the Maelstrom does is it takes these little samples, these are just waves, and it chops them up into tiny little increments called grains. It plays them one after another at a speed which we can um, determine by this motion vector. This will tell it how fast it's going to play across all the samples. So essentially what we're doing is we're stretching a sound out to infinity and the variations that those little samples within a sample are going to produce are going to are, are how we get our sound. Now the mouse is a great thing but what if what if we could use our own samples? We could get a lot more out of the Maelstrom. I'm going to show you just how to do that. But in order to accomplish this, we're going to need to do some tricky wiring. So um, feel free to follow along. You'll probably have to pause it because I move quick. Otherwise, I'll run out of time. What we're going to do first is create an NN19 sampler. This is the simplest way to do it. You could probably try it with an NNXT after you watch this, but uh, I haven't done that, so I can't comment. We're going to go into the programmer and we're going to connect rotary 1 to be our sample start. At this point, let's load up a sample. I like to go for the uh, FX box and I'm going to use something you know, I, I have one that I want to use here. It's called slip oh, slip me. This is our sound. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck my keyboard tracking. This way, it won't matter where I press on the keyboard, it's always going to trigger the same sound effect. Okay, now this seems a little a little fast actually, but oh well. Now, Rotary 1, we've got that controlling our sample start, so effectively we can get uh, sort of a grain synthesis by playing it really fast. But the way we're going to use this. Right after the NN19, I'm going to create a subtractor. Now, subtractors make excellent gates. And the way we're going to use this is we're going to connect LFO1 on the subtractor to our gate input on the NN19. Make sure that there's nothing connected to your audio output. You see what that does? That allows me to control the speed of our grain using the LFO. So, in my subtractor, I'm going to connect rotary 2 to the LFO 1 rate. And I'm going to use a higher minimum value, something like 60. Great. So, that will give us control of the speed. And this one will give us control of the placing. Great. Now the Maelstrom, it doesn't play all the time. We don't want this to play all the time. So we're going to do a little bit of tricky wiring here. In the back side, I'm going to connect the mod envelope to my level input on the NN19 and we're going to max it out. Now what this is going to do is this going to take our envelope from this right here. Whenever we press a key on the um, keyboard, it should trigger this mod envelope and having my sustain all the way up means that as long as I have a key on the keyboard we should be uh, letting sound through our envelope here let's see if this works here we go yep sounds like it's working okay now um, once again all we did was com combine er, connect our level to our mod envelope and max out the sustain on the mod envelope. Now you can do this with any instrument that has a, um, a level input, which I believe are all of them. And if you want to play with a little bit to get some some different effects, you can you can do so. We're going to do one more thing here. We're going to connect our filter envelope to rotary one. Now rotary one, if you remember, was our sample start. In the Maelstrom, it doesn't stay stationary but rather it sort of crawls across our waveform. And we're going to achieve that here by using a high attack and a high release. Now what that should do, if I crank this up, is when I press a key, 
not only is it going to let the sound through, but if you watch this knob here, the sample start knob, it's going to automatically go forward and then backward in sort of a ping pong fashion. Cool. Um, actually, I probably want some decay on there. Okay, now you can do it that way. Um, I think we might want to change the speed on that setting, so I'm going to connect rotary 3 to be my filter envelope attack on my subtractor. I'm going to reverse these values. Now, for some reason I can't rename these, otherwise I would do that. So, uh, so far what we have... is a effect of chopping our any sample we want up into tiny little bits and playing across them at any speed we want and with any um, sort of interval setting we want so that's the basics of this of this synthesis um, we have a gate event being sent by our subtractor um, because it is within the same combinator as our NN19 we can use that whenever we press the key and send the MIDI signal it's going to affect both our level which is what's keeping it quiet right now and it's also going to affect our um, motion which is from the filter envelope now you can't use the filter envelope here on your NN19 because it's just being triggered far too fast so we can create our own in this fashion let's see if we use an envelope controlled filter right in line with our NN19 what we have to do in this case since we're out of envelopes here we can either do a CV splitter or we can create another um, subtractor. I'm going to use a CV splitter and what I'm going to do very quickly is just take my filter envelope I'm going to combine that or split that so that I can use it for my frequency here as well and I'm going to turn this down get a bit of a different effect out of here so this should give us some filter control of our uh, our setup. Let's see if we can hear it. It's going too fast. Now, of course, you you have to play around with some different uh, different sound effects here. You'll get different results with each sample. And of course, if you play around with your speed, you can get some interesting effects out of it. Um, I recommend. Um, probably throwing some delay in there wouldn't hurt. Delay is a good thing to kind of cover up the uh, differences between each interval. You get some pretty wild effects out of it. If you want to have some pitch control even, you can simply use your pitch bend. Or if you want to have like a permanent control of it, you can map it to one of your uh, semitone controls, something like that. So, um, let me reiterate what we've done here. <clears throat> Within a combinator, we have an NN19 playing a sample we choose, routing it through whatever effects we want. Now the important thing is that we're getting our gate events from a subtractor which is in the same combinator. We're getting our level control from our mod envelope, which basically just means that whenever I press a key, the level goes back up to a normal volume, otherwise it drops down to zero. Sorry about that. Um, we're splitting the output from our filter envelope so that we can control a few things here. Um, I'm controlling my frequency CV, although I could use any, any of these controls really, or a separate controller. You could even use a Maelstrom instead of a subtractor that will give you uh, the flexibility that its different modulation envelopes have. and um, uh, the only thing that, or the only other thing we're doing is having our LFO tied in, or I'm sorry, the envelope tied in to rotary one. Now, just because you have a program doesn't mean that it can't receive effects from the backside. It can, and that's what we're doing here. We just have this uh, very slow, um, this very slow envelope is what it is. It really just comes in very gradually. Very gradually. That is going to cause our sample start to move forward and then back. And you can witness it right there. 
change the speed on it. 